we all to varying degrees support uh, bilateral and multilateral efforts, and I know <clears throat> this administration is about 10 months into that effort. Uh, uh, Senator Mitchell has a, a, a difficult challenge, as you pointed out. He's a patient man, clearly, from his experience in, in the Irish peace talks. But <clears throat> when we look at uh, the visit here earlier this year by King Abdullah uh, from Jordan, when we look at uh, the most recent visit by President Mubarak uh, in August, when we look at some of the other efforts that are all I would suppose to be a part of this multilateral and bilateral efforts as it relates to the uh, Israeli-Palestinian peace process, um, uh, I think there's a, a concern, a level of frustration that uh, we see the, uh, uh, a number of the critical peace partners uh, in the area uh, using uh, uh, this as a, as a crutch or an excuse. I mean, the cancellation, as you noted, uh, with, with uh, Turkey, the relationship with Turkey and Syria right now with the 40 ministers that have been meeting. Uh, I, I just uh, picked up a quote uh, uh, earlier this month. King Abdullah expressed dismay over a perceived lack of administration focused on the Middle East peace process in an interview with the Italian daily uh, La Repubblica. King Abdullah said, I've heard people in Washington talking about Iran, and again Iran, and always Iran, but I insist on and keep insisting on the Palestinian question. Um, clearly, uh, we are concerned about Iran, and as you inferred to the five plus one, but when, where are the milestones here that are going to show uh, that the uh, countries in the neighborhood are, are focused at the same level that we are about achieving uh, uh, the, the critical steps necessary to, to achieve this, this piece that we talk about that's always elusive? You know, I'm surprised to hear the quote you give because it because given the amount of diplomacy that Senator Mitchell himself, as well as the Secretary and the President, have devoted to Middle East peace, that it, it seem it strikes me as somewhat odd that someone would say, "Well, this administration isn't really trying on Middle East peace. We're certainly trying. We want to see negotiations start as quickly as possible, but also in the best possible atmosphere, so that those negotiations succeed. It's not enough to just have the Israelis and Palestinians sit together. I know, but sometimes that atmosphere is is uh, is an excuse for not for doing nothing. I mean, and, and, and I also want to ask you about the question of elections. Uh, the last administration uh, went headlong into elections, and uh, sometimes be careful what you wish for. Uh, the elections that are being proposed next year, uh, are, are, are the Palestinians really prepared to, to move in that? Uh, I mean, what, do we know, do we have any confidence what the outcomes may bring? I, I wouldn't say that we would have confidence that these elections would be taking place. You know, we know what President Abbas has said, um, but we also have seen the re, you know the reactions to that. Um, all I can say is that our partner for peace has got to be um, Palestinians who accept Israel's right to exist, who agree to negotiations, who, ex who reject the use of violence in order to try to affect the outcome, who, who accept what's been agreed to already. That's, that's the Palestinian partner for peace. Um, and I, I think that we'll see a lot more intra-Palestinian debate before we see any kind of Palestinian elections. Well, I have other, two other quick questions. Um, I was saddened to, to see an article uh, in, in uh, this summer of children in Hamas camps, summer camps, reenacting the capture of Galad Shalat. Uh, the Palestinians can talk borders and talk agreements and talk all the good, happy talk that they want, but I think these, this was a deplorable incident, and, and I think summer camps events that, that recognize or glorify this sets the peace process back many steps. Uh, what's the administration doing about these kinds of efforts in the curriculum? And it's just not with Palestine. I mean, still some of our our partners in the Middle East, uh, even though they've indicated does that they're trying to clean up their curriculum about <clears throat> uh, uh, references toward, towards Jews and Christians and others, it still seems to be a problem. That, the example you described is, is, is awful. I couldn't agree, couldn't agree with you more. Every party in, in the area 
has a responsibility to help build the atmosphere for peace, to help build the atmosphere for trust and confidence, and the sorts of things that you, the th thing that you described. I agree, it takes us in absolutely the wrong direction. We've got a dialogue going with a number of, our, number of countries that's quiet about the curriculum, and we have some programs that are done to try to improve the curriculum that's being taught. In the case of sort of Palestinian schools run by UNRWA, for example, we have, we have funded a tolerance program that's supplemental, supplemental material. We're very aware of the issue you, you raise. We agree But that do we put these countries on notice? Do we put the Palestinians yeah, on notice? This is unacceptable. We will, it, it's the chair's intent to offer a quick second round. So if, if the gentleman would hold the additional question for that time, or ask any other question then. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Connolly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Ambassador Feltman. Um, uh, could, let me, let me uh, sort of start 